Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Come on, open up your mouth and bless him. Come on, open up your mouth and bless the Lord, your God. Hallelujah. Come on, let's make some noise in this place. For Jesus Christ, our Savior, our Redeemer, our Emancipator, the Forgiver of Sins. God, we thank you. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you on this morning for your loving kindness and for your tender mercy, God, toward us. Uh, for towards this people on today. God, we thank you, God. God, for waking us up this morning. God, starting us on our way. God, we thank you, God, for a reasonable portion of health and strength. God, we thank you, God. God, right now, in the name of Jesus, God, for allowing us to see, God, the blessing, God, the gift of this day, God. God, we thank you, God, right now, in the name of Jesus, God. God, when we opened up our mouth, God, we had words, we had wind. Uh, God, we had life, uh, and God, for that, we thank you, God. God, right now, in the name of Jesus, God, we come into this place, God. God, to magnify your name, uh, God, and to bless you. God, we come for no other reason, God, than to magnify your name, than to lift you up, God. God, than to make your name great in this place, God. God, Father, God, in the name of Jesus, uh, we establish a breakthrough atmosphere in here uh, where signs, wonders, and miracles and deliverance can happen, God. God, we thank you, God. God, for your presence, God. God, which destroys the yoke, God. God, which sets the captives free, God. God, which rearranges things in our very lives. Uh, God, we thank you, God. God, for your very presence, God. God, that comes to love us, God. God, that comes to restore us. Uh, that comes to redeem us. Uh, that comes to lift us up, God. God, we thank you, God. God, right now, in the name of Jesus, God. Guide us from you, from you God, whom all bless Blessings flow. And God, right now, in the name of Jesus, uh, we ask you on today, God, God, to make your abode in this place, God. God, to make yourself resident in this place, God. God, we thank you, God. God, you see, you said in your word, God, God, that you seek a worshiper, God. God, find us here on Clark Street on today, God. God, find us here on Harrington in today, God. God, right now, in the name of Jesus, God. God, come see about us, God. God, right now, in the name of Jesus, God. God, we even give you a wave offer and even now, God. God, we thank you, God. God, we extend our hands uh, and we wave to you, God. God, we establish this spot, God. God, right now, in the name of Jesus, God. God, is a place of worship, God. God, we establish, God, this house, God. God, is a place of worship, God. God, we're praisers uh, and worshipers where we dwell, uh, where we lift up your name, God. God, we thank you, God, right now, in the name of Jesus, God. God, for what you would do in this place, God. God, we thank you for the preached word. God, we thank you for the word that comes uh, the word that comes to save uh, the word that comes to deliver uh, the word that comes to emancipate uh, God break us free from every chain uh, every bondage every spell every hex uh, God that comes uh, God that to stagnate us God God right now in the name of Jesus God God we bind every distraction uh, in this place God God right now in the name of Jesus God God we bind the distractor uh, and the distracted uh, God right now in the name of Jesus God God, we come, God. God, in this place, uh, focus on glory, God. God, right now, in the name of Jesus, God. And then we thank you, God. God, right now, in the name of Jesus, God. God, for what you would do to us and through us. Oh in this place uh, now we open up our mouths uh, and we bless the Lord our God uh, we open up our mouth we put our hands together uh, and we bless Jesus uh, who is the author uh, who is the finisher uh, of our very faith uh, we thank you God we thank you God we thank you Jesus uh, for what you would do for us uh, we thank you Jesus I said, we thank you, Jesus. Uh, come on, let's lift our hands. Open up our mouths. Uh, and bless the Lord our God. Uh, these are the prayers of your people. Thus far, the prayers of your people. Oh, come on, people of God. Clap your hands. Hallelujah. While you're clapping, open up your mouth. Hallelujah. And begin to give God praise. It's the day that the Lord has made. Anybody come to rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Grateful for another day, another opportunity that the Lord has allowed us to see. 
Hallelujah. Another chance to give him glory. Hallelujah, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord with me.
Let me hear you say bless. That he's gonna do just that. Come on and bless him. Hallelujah. Late in the midnight hour, God's gonna turn it around. It's gonna work in your favor. I, I want what it sounded like Thursday and Friday. I don't know. But late in the midnight hour, God's gonna turn it around. It's gonna work in your favor. Hallelujah. Okay. And around. Maybe y'all go ahead and sit down. Maybe, maybe y'all don't want the Lord to turn nothing for you. Sometimes you got to believe it. Hallelujah. Do you believe he can turn it around? 
Hallelujah. You don't believe it. You don't, you don't, you don't believe he can heal your body. You don't. You don't believe he gonna make a way out of nowhere. You don't. You don't believe that the Lord going to bring you out. See, sometimes when you sick, you got to act like you healed. Sometimes when you ain't got no money, you got to act like you got it. Oh, I wish I had a witness today. Sometime in your life when you frustrated, you got to act like you got peace. No, we're not going to fake it till we make it. We just, we just going to have faith to believe. I might as well act like what God going to do. Hallelujah. Because he did it before. And I believe that he's going to do it again. Hallelujah. We bless him today. We bless him for who he is. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it, and the world can't take it away. You can't make me doubt him, because I know too much about him. Hallelujah. Glory. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. Has he done anything for you? I'm just, I'm just trying to see what kind of church I got to preach to. That's all. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just trying to see. Honor God today for all of us that are here. Amen to those that are in the midst of the temple, to those that have joined us clear with camera. How y'all doing? Thank God for those that have joined us uh, via social media. To the prayer, praise team, to these musicians, to all of you, we thank God. For all of you that are here, uh, we thank you for those that showed your acts of support and kindness uh, as we celebrated Thursday and Friday, 10 years of being a bishop. Amen. Those that were here, those that were on the stream, amen. Sometimes participation means more to me than money. Amen. I, I, I thank God for money. Uh, money, 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 contrary to popular belief is not the root of all evil. The Bible says money answereth all things. You don't, you don't believe that? Get sick. Get sick. If you go to the free clinic, but get sick and get, get money, you can go get a specialist. Amen. The Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. But I, but I have to say this, beyond money, uh, the, the kindness that people show, people don't have to be nice. People don't have to be nice. People don't have to support you. And I indeed thank God for those people that love Bishop Cannon. It means a lot. Even in all of my imperfections, you still love me. And you you put up with me, you tolerate me, and I, I, the same way you appreciate me, I appreciate you. Uh, Matthew, the gospel according to Matthew, this the same sentence it was uh, that I made. Uh, should this, I just, uh, it just, I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to, for the sake of time, in your, in your own study. Did I thank God for the musicians? I do. I thank God for y'all. I 
appreciate y'all for real. I don't, I don't just say it, I mean it. Did you get your package? Did you get your package? Oh, yeah. Okay. Share. <laughs> Never mind. To, to the word of God. <laughs> We had to teach these young people to share me. <laughs> it, it don't mean some for you now, and it's some for you later. <laughs> but, uh, my, my textual presentation this morning will come from the Gospel of St. Matthew, the 14th verse. Very familiar passage of Scripture. The 14th chapter, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. My, my wife is looking very good this morning, but I'm just all over the place. Uh, Matthew, the 14th chapter, and, and you can read this in its entirety later, verses 24 through 31. But for the sake of time this morning, I just want to hone in on verse 30. If that's okay. Verse, verse 30. Uh, but when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. You may be seated. And I might not, I might not holler today. If I, if I don't, it's not that I can't. But I want to preach this morning from the subject, the danger in distraction. Father, it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. One, one, one must understand that in order to live a life that is pleasing to God, you must allow God to use you anywhere, any way, in any time. Our relationship with God is not or I should say should not be just relegated to just Sunday morning worship. People ask me all the time, why do I always show preference to my, your senior members? First of all, because I can't. I'm grown. But, but, but I, I show preference to my senior members. I'm trying not to look over there at Mother Lope today. Um, Mother got her hair out. It's so beautiful. But she had that look on her face. What you mean you ain't trying to look over here? Wait a minute. Mother has her hair out, and it's beautiful, and it's flowing. And that's how my grandmother would wear her hair years ago. And, and I, I show preference because there, there was a degree of wisdom in the older saints that I'm convinced we don't have today. that there was a degree of, in, in, in the words of Pastor Muller, uh, stickability that, that we don't have. The, the older saints knew that all that I have is because of God. I might not have much, but what I have, I owe to God. They would say things like, uh, take the Lord God with you everywhere, <laughs> everywhere you go, because you never know when you're going to need him. They, they, they understood that their relationship with God transcended beyond the ambiguity. What, what you laughing for? I haven't did it for your wife. Does it mean, well, it's your wife, man. I don't know. I just, you be doing it. <laughs> they understood that, that, that it's in him I move. It's in him I breathe, and it's in him I have my being. I am nothing, but they say it's my God. 
I am nothing without God. When God I love y'all. Elder Carol. Oh, the devil is really making me preach this today. <laughs> that ain't the devil. It ain't the devil, it's just technical difficulty, that's all. But Elder Carolyn, when God what? Help me. When God Uh huh. Said, what did he say? Take. Take. All right. When God said, yes. take ye. Yes. Oh. Okay, what I give it thee. There you go. When God has a desire to use a believer, he has to, thank you, ascertain the durability of one's belief in him. Not the belief in a leader. Not the belief in a principle. But do you believe him. Because if I believe him, when things happen in my life that I can't understand, I'll still trust him. A lot of times, Mother Walker, we oftentimes say, uh, even when I can't trace him, I'll yet trust him. And I have biblical precedent. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all of thine heart. Lean not to thine own understanding. But in some of your ways, acknowledge him. Huh? All? Not just on Sunday. Not just when revival comes. All your ways. That means when I'm sick, in the valley, going through. I must trust him. Even when I can't trace him. He has something for me that I can't handle now. But through life, it prepares me for greater. Last, last week, I believe it was, uh, we, 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 we talked about who do you say he is. That conversation that Jesus had with, with, with Simon Barjona, where he asked him, uh, I know what everybody else is saying, but what does, Brother Clyde, your relationship with me dictate I am? What does he say he is to you? Here we find this week, the, the, the same Simon Barjona that we talked about on last week, we find now this this, this same uh, Peter, we find him now uh, being in another predicament. One thing you've got to understand as a believer, uh, we don't know what God has for us up the road, but we have to identify in order to get it, you've got to go through some things. Oh, I'm going to preach good in a minute. We don't, I'm going to say it again. We don't know what God has for us up the road. Meaning, I don't know where God is taking me. I don't know where God is leading me. But in order for me to get in, there are some things that I've just got to go. i got a problem with saints of, of, of today. Don't want to go through nothing. And I've learned that in order to get to who you are in God, there are some things that you just got to go through. There was a song, I know y'all like singing this contemporary stuff, but there was a song years ago, Take Me Through, Lord Jesus, Take Me Through. 
I don't care what the rest of the world decides to do. I've made up my mind and I ain't turned. Oh, y'all don't like them kind of songs. I've made up my, they made the songs personal. Hallelujah. We, we, they wasn't, we didn't chase after Jesus back in the day. We just stood fast. We're with the liberty that Christ has made us free. But this, this, this text this morning, we find, we, find, we find the disciples and Jesus, but Peter being the central tenet this morning of the text. This text finds us, read the whole story tonight when you go home, but this text finds us now where Jesus puts the disciples on a ship and sends them to the other side of the lake and they now encounter a storm. You have Jesus walking to them on the water. This is the same text, Sister Linda, help me uh, uh, if I am correct. This is the same text where Jesus said, be not afraid for it is I. He told them not to worry and not to fear. He gave them uh, an, an, an amodicum, if you will, of confidence. He let them know that I might not be there with you, but I am yet on the way. I wish somebody would hear me today. I might not be in the storm physically, but I am yet on the way. You have the disciples in the ship, but the Bible lets you know that they are now panicking. They are now afraid. They are looking at the situation more than they are looking at their God. And it amazes me how we can look at God when he's turning tuna fish into a buffet. But we don't look at him when we need him to make a way out of none. These men are now in trouble. And when we get in trouble, we try, and we try to find ways of getting out of trouble instead of trusting God. And I'm a witness today. In trouble, do you really find God? It is in trouble do you find out who you really are. Because of the pattern, in trouble, folk leave you. So you don't, you don't really know who God is when you have a lot of people around you. Because everybody is saying good stuff to you. Everybody is saying how good your cake is, how good your words are, how, good you, how much you mean to them. But in trouble, you're on an island by yourself. And you have nobody to talk to but God. I wish I had a witness here in the building. But in trouble, do we know just how much our relationship with God is galvanized. Yeah. Eleven men are now going crazy because they feel like they may die. But the Simon Peter says to Jesus, if this is you, I've been rocking with you for a few days. I've seen what you can do. But if this is really you, allow me to do something that no one else has ever done before. Allow me to, oh, I feel like preaching. Allow me to come out of my situation and to walk to you on water. I told you I might not holler today. Sometimes if God brings you out of the situation and brings you away from the situation, you can see God better than you could in the situation. And I'm a little, I'm a little concerned because 12 of us have been kicking it with him. But 11 of y'all down are shifting. So bring me out of my situation and allow me to do something no one has ever done before. Walk on the water. Oh, if I could just put a pin in that right now, God, for some of you in here this morning, if you just patiently let God bring you out of what you're in right now, by faith and prophetically, he's going to let you do some things that no one has ever done 
before. The text today lets us know that he did what Peter asked him to do. He allowed him to come out of the ship and walk on the water. Which brings me today to my text. The text says, as the elder short was walking on the water to go to Jesus, he began to lose focus on the power. And he got distracted. Can you say deep? He was distracted deep. Okay. Like, 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 what? You want to get it? No, leave it there. Leave it there. Leave it there. Oh, oh it's Mother Walker's pen. Oh, yeah, you better get that. Go ahead and get it, dude. We don't want no smoke this morning. How do I get distracted when I'm doing what I ask God to do? He asked him if it's you. If you just touch me this time, God. If you give me this job this time, God. Oh, my, I'll praise you till times get better. Oh, God, if you just move this time. I'll praise you. I'll, I'll serve you. He saw the wind. Boisterous. How? Don't say nothing. What was that? Oh, okay, there you go. How, Sister Tish? Do we allow distractions to take place when God has answered our prayer? The request was, y'all must don't like this kind of preaching, right? Y'all want me to get to end the wrath? <laughs> not today. Nope, not today. The request was, Lord, bid me to come on the water. And the Lord said, in the words of Bob Barker, come on down. Who's got your Bible open quickly? Matter of fact, no, Cleo, uh, can you put the little Bible verse up? Give me verse 29, if you can. And he said, what? Come, Come on down. Yes, and Peter did what God, he responded to the command. Are you with me? Yes. And did what? Come down out of the ship. Yes. And what happened? Y'all read it again. He, he did what? He on to do what? To he did. Jesus did what was asked. I'm trying to behave myself this morning, but how many of us have been in the predicament where we asked Jesus to do something and he did what we asked, but distractions caused us to miss God? Mm. Distractions, uh, something that prevents someone from giving their full attention to something. Jesus, uh, if in fact you did not know, Jesus requires, matter of fact, he demands. He demands our full attention. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. He, he, the, well, the Bible says it like this, God is a jealous God. And he says, I'll have no other, you like this kind of preacher, right? he, I'll have no other God before me. I don't have the God of extra hours on your job. 
I don't have the God of you trying to be successful. I don't have the God of anything else other than you submitting to me for who I am. What are you? I am Alpha and Omega. I'm the beginning and I'm the one that was, the one that is, and the one that is. I am all that you need. I wish I had time to talk about this, but there was only one God. But he internally exists in three distinct offices. God the Father stepped out on the panoply of nothing and said, let there be and there was. God the Son, oh God, help me here. God knew that he's a spirit and they that worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth. God the Father knew that no man can look upon me and live. Hmm. So because the world got out of, co out of in chaos and out of pocket, he had to send somebody that the world could see to redeem them back to God. So he went into himself, pulled out flesh out of himself, sent him to the world. John 3.16 said, for God so loved the world that he gave a gift. Oh my God, help me here. That's good theology. God, the spirit could not walk on earth. Because did not the Bible say, no man can look upon me and live? Yes. Yes. Jesus, God in flesh, the Son of God, yes, in flesh, the yes, Son of God was God, yes. in flesh. Yes, One God, One two offices. Yes. The 33, you like this kind of preaching, don't you? For 33 and a 30 years, he walked on the face of the earth to do not to turn water into wine not to heal somebody's body not to be uh, take a little lad's lunch and feed the multitude but his only purpose was to point us back to God and after his time on earth was up he went back to God who do you think God was talking to when he said let us make man in our oh this is good preaching today how do we make something out of me? That's because God is a bad, bad man. But when God went back, when Jesus went back to God, Jesus said, I'm not going to leave you by yourself. I'm not going to leave you comfortless. I'm not going to leave you out here on this island by yourself. I, I got to give you something that when life comes to distract you, you can hold on to. So I'm going to leave you the paracletus, if you will, the dunamis power that brings energy to a believer. It's the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is a keeper. God says that I need your full attention. And when you give God your full attention, you don't worry about diversions of life. You don't worry about interruptions. You don't worry about interference. Because I know that God is with me. Everywhere I go, he's with me. And if something comes to divert me, it would let me know that I must be doing something right. Oh, because I got to help some of you here today. The enemy don't fool with nobody who ain't got no purpose. Yeah, 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 yeah. The devil, the devil, not gonna, the devil, not gonna fool with you if you don't mean something to God. The reason why Simon Bar Jonah, Simon, Simon Peter, Peter went through all that he went through was because there was going to be one day that the power of God uh, made a, 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 a manifestation in the upper room and they had to have somebody that could corroborate what was going on. It was Peter that said, this ain't that, this ain't, this ain't Hennessy, this ain't Patron. This, yeah. but this is that that the prophet spoke of. Yeah. In the last days, I'll pour my spirit out upon. God said, I will always have someone that will speak well of you. Yeah. Because a whole lot of folk will lie on you. A whole lot of folk will use you. But you always need at least one person that will watch this, not stand behind closed doors, but will stand in the multitude 
It said, you don't know them like you think you do. No, no. They, 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 not, they, not, they cuss you out, but they didn't cuss you out because they, they just wanted to. Y'all got quiet. Make some of y'all don't cuss. Stop that. Distractions are only effective when they can redirect your attention. Distractions are only effective when they redirect your attention. We had some technical difficulties with the sound this morning, but it did not stop me from preaching. Because watch this, being uncomfortable is not the same as stopping. Being uncomfortable is not the same as stopping. Being a little uneasy is not the same as stopping. You've got to make up in your mind that I don't care what happens in my life. It may make, it may make me uncomfortable. It may put me on edge. But I'm not going to stop what it is God has assigned to my life. Because if I give attention to it, I have now taken my focus off of him. Are y'all with me this morning? Attention. Webster defines attention as a selective refocusing of consciousness or receptivity. A selective refocusing of consciousness and receptivity. In other words, you give you you have the authority to what you give attention to. Nobody kept you home from church today. You chose. Why would you say that, Bishop? My car tore up. Yup, it sure did. Mm -hmm. Transmission been slipping for six months. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep, sure did. Yep, car tore up. Yep. House caught on fire. Yep. Yep. Dog died. Yep. Yep. You had gout. Yep. Yep. You had uh, kidney stones. Yep. Yep, and I know, I understand. Oh, Bishop Cannon understand. Yeah, uh-huh. But didn't, 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 didn't your car tear up that Friday night that you let the Elks? <laughs> didn't, didn't, you, didn't, you, didn't you have that night you was at the Starlight over in Easton? Didn't you, didn't you have kidney stones that night? You limped up in there and said, give me two shots of Seagram 7. It'll make me feel better. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, your house caught on fire. Y'all yeah. ain't talking back to me. You was over at Cambridge at Gentleman Joe's. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. You had to chat and chew, yeah. yeah. You was up there in Odessa at Kimothy's. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just asking a question. We, we, uh, oh God help me. We have selective The same way you serve the devil uh, must be the same way you serve God. I'll let nothing. You didn't have a car. Oh, I'm great dating myself now. You, you'd pile up in that deuce and a quarter. You'd pile up in that Impala. Let me tell you. Let me tell you, all young folks, something. I'm going to tell all my senior members right now because I love them so much. <laughs> See, right now we got 85-inch we got TVs in our house and we got 100-inch screens and stuff. But back in the day, they had drive through Drive-in, I'm sorry, not drive through just been drive-in. And, and, and watch this, y'all. Uh, 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 you, 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 you pay one price for the vehicle. Because what you would do, look at Brother Clyde laughing. You, <laughs> Y'all don't believe, y'all, y'all, those of y'all had never seen a drive-in. If you know where Mother Loper lives, ride past where Mother Loper lives and look to your right. And, 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 and you would go and you would pull up to the pole and you would take the speaker from the pole. You don't know nothing about that. You've been saved all your life. No, 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 no. Uh-uh, uh-uh, wait a minute. Your husband was a pastor. Uh-uh. You're going to tell on yourself. Oh, all right, before the mother, mother said, wait a minute. Before the time, Reverend, before the time. Hallelujah. Pay one price. 
And everybody in the car got to see and hear. Y'all with me? How many of y'all ever went through the drive-in in the trunk? Thank you. So they act like they don't know what I'm talking about now, bro, Clyde. Some folk had them trunks back in the day. You get two or three bodies in. Am I talking right deep? You'd pull over about a quarter mile from the drive-in. Two or three bodies get in that trunk. They close that trunk. And you just had faith to believe that whoever was driving that car was going to open that trunk. Are y'all with me? We just left. I, I am a product of the remainder of drive-in, so I know about this. They told me one day, they said, we're going to put you in the trunk. I said, the devil, it's a lie. He put me in the trunk. I don't even see that movie. That, that's why I don't like movies today. But you would all get to go in. Hallelujah. Now, we don't have that. Everybody must be accountable for themselves. Go to the movie theater now. Everybody got to have a ticket. In this text, I got to hurry up. But in this text, we witness Peter uh, experiencing three types of distraction. Three types, three types of distractions. And I want to kind of take my time through this this morning because the enemy can be very cunning in his attempt to distract you from your connectivity to God. Oh, God. I said the enemy can be very cunning. In his, in, in his attempt to distract you from your connectivity to God. A lot of times we think because we don't come to church, uh, 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 that's the distraction. Now, you can come to church and still be distracted. Oh, I'm getting ready to get in trouble. But there's some folk that, that's watching me at home on the, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the streaming that's more intent than some of y'all to come to church every Sunday. There's somebody at home right now laying on their couch watching me that's in tune to everything that's being said. And some of y'all right up in the tabernacle don't remember what I said three minutes ago. You're on your phone texting. You, you're squirming. You can't, you, you can't sit still. Right in the temple. Right in the place of your blessing. But you're distracted. In and out. Out and in. In and out. Distraction. You got somebody home. I don't know what camera I'm talking to, but they home right now smoking a blunt talking about that nigga really is preaching. No, I'm just, I'm just telling you, I'm just telling you, you know. I asked somebody tell me one time, my best high ass is on Sunday when you preach it. I said, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. You got to become all that you can to be to whoever until they get to the place where they can come to the temple. And some folks, let's just be honest. In the day that we're living in, some folk just not going to come to church. Some folk just not going to come. So if you're not going to come, then we got to take church to you. As long as you receive the word, and that's why I tell y'all, leave folk alone that don't come to church. You don't know why they don't come to church. Don't nobody bother you because you don't pay tithe. Don't nobody bother you because you can't keep one person in your relationship. So don't bother somebody that don't do what you do. That's a distraction. One of the greatest songs known to man was sweep around your own front door. For you try to sweep around my. I had to add something to it, Hezekiah, because I know they were going to try to sing it like the song. <laughs> Distractions. Watch this. Watch this in the text. The first type is a visual. Somebody say visual. visual. A visual distraction is you will take your eye off the point of focus. Deacon Rocky, a few minutes ago, saw that pen on the floor, and Deacon Rocky was not going to be uncomfortable. He was, he was not going to be comfortable until he got that pen. I don't care how long we let that pen sit there. If that pen was there next Sunday, Deacon Rocky would not be comfortable. Deacon Rocky would have called me every day this week, Bishop, that, 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 that pen is still on the floor. Tell it, Gavin. Gavin even said, yes, sir, I know you're right. 
That pen ain't hurting nobody. That pen wasn't bothering nobody. It just fell off the lap of Mother Walker. Yeah. But Deacon Rocky came to church to get a word. Yeah. But that ink pen took his focus visual. A lot of times what we see, verse 29 says it like this, Peter walked on the water to go to Jesus, meaning he had already seen him being Jesus do it. Verse 26 says, and knew the direction to start walking in. He saw it. Verse 30 says, and he saw the wind, meaning turned his attention from what he was going to. Visual. Somebody say visual. visual. You have visual distractions. My man Gavin. That's what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. You keep it up like that, I'm going to put you up here with me. Even if I say something wrong, just say, yes, sir, yes, sir. So we have visual. Then we have... <laughs> then we have cognitive distractions. God, come on, Gavin. We take our mind off the task at hand. Visual uh, distractions are when you do something that you can see with your eyes. But cognitive is when you shift your modality of thinking. Verse 30 says, Peter saw the wind. He was afraid and beginning to sink. He saw with his eyes but he became afraid in his mind, and he began to sink. The storm, watch this, the storm was perceived as a threat of life in the minds of the disciples. Are, are, are we all on the same page? However, Peter, help me, Sheikah, was a fisherman by trade. So a fisherman is what? Familiar with water. I fish. Haven't been in a few years, but I fish. I know the, the mechanism of fishing. In order to be a good fisherman, you've got to know when the tide comes in and when the tide goes out. In order to be a good fisherman, you've got to know uh, the moon. Because all that stuff works in how fish flow. So a good fisherman would know uh, the trajectory of storm. Are y'all with me today? Why worry about that which you already know? You mean to tell me this is the first time, Doc, you've ever been on a boat in a storm? I got it. I got it. You don't care about the storm because you're out here making money. You never focus on the storm because you got to pay your mortgage. So you've learned to not look at distractions because of what your physical assignment is. Am I, missing, am I losing you? But when God is trying to take you from here to there, now your mind is shifting you into everything around but him. Peter was a fisherman. Some of us in here, let's be honest, we're living our best life. Living my best life. Living my best life. Some of y'all in here today, you're driving cars that you can't afford. You're living in houses that you don't qualify for. The way you sinned in the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s, you should have cirrhosis of the liver. But you're here. Some of y'all, the way you used to tear that dance floor up with the Watusi, the chicken walk, the mashed potato. You should have no cartilage in your knees. Man, come back, back in the day. Help me, bro, Clyde. <laughs> I wish somebody on my stream knew what I was talking about. 
But back in the day, every dance was a stomp. That's why some of y'all got bad hips now. Mother says she paid for it now. But you've been through it. Some of y'all would dance. Y'all would shut the party down. Y'all would go to them house parties with the red. Remember the red light? Y'all would party till the white light came on. Then you would leave the house. Brooke Clyde. Come on, Brooke Clyde. You ain't laughed this hard in months, have you? Some of y'all will go to the club, you shut the club down and go to the speakeasy. Go to the juke joint. Go to somebody's house. Y'all see these heads over here? <laughs> Let me get back to the word. I think I done took some of y'all, I think I done distracted some. Peter, Peter walked on the water, but was ultimately afraid of the wind. Come here, Gabby. <laughs> His grandma must be home teaching him. <laughs> I said he was afraid of the wind. Yes! Yeah. <laughs> the text didn't say that he saw water. He saw wind. Now, now, how do you see wind? Now, we're not talking about on a, on a, on a real cold winter morning and you go, <sighs> how do you just see wind? A lot of times the devil will throw things our way that really aren't even worth looking at. But we'll get focused the stuff that, oh God, help me here. He, uh, he did something that had never been fathomed before. Nobody ever thought about walking on water because water, uh, weight displaces water. Which means that when you put weight on water, it displaces it and it goes down. But Peter did something nobody had ever done before. God has a way that even when you are burdened and heavy laden, that when you focus on him, he has a way to make you light. That's why the Bible says, cast all of your cares on him, for he cared for you. I'm trying not to holler today. Same wind that caused him. Come here, Gavin. Same wind that caused him to triumph is the same wind that caused him to almost experience tragedy. In other words, the same thing that got you on the mountain top could be the same thing that will find you in the valley. Same thing. Watch this. Nothing changed. Who got the Bible open? Cleo, do me a favor. Put up, put up verse uh, 29 and 30. Are they up? Okay, thank you. Verse 29. And he said, come unto me, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink. He cried, saying, Lord, save me. Nothing changed. Same Jesus, same water, same wind. Say it, same Jesus, same water, same wind. Nothing changed but what he gave attention to. As long as he kept focus on, he said, he did what? 
walked on water. Where did he go? No, to the food line. To the Walmart. He responded to the prayer request. He acted on the prayer request. He did the manifestation of the prayer request. And he went to the one that he requested it of. In other words, Jesus is going to do his part. You just got to keep doing yours. Oh, this is good today. This is, this is good today. This is good today. I got a question. I got a question. I got a question. I got a question. How do you see when if you're still looking at Jesus? Talking about distractions. Yes. Because did, did, do, do we not, and, and Cleo, which camera are we on? I, I know I'm making it hard for you today, I'm sorry. Uh, do we not subscribe to the theology that if you ask Jesus something, he responds to your request, he manifests what you ask, you can do what you ask. We subscribe to that. So, so how... As a believer, I'm talking to you in Facebook land or whatever land we in this week. How do you, as a believer in him? Because yes, notice three minutes ago I said you can believe in him and you can trust in him and not be here in the four walls with us. Because if, you're, if you can hear me, then you're with me. How can you be walking to, to him, but all of a sudden... Look at something that ain't even there. Distraction. Cognitive. We're talking about your mandula oblongata. Your cerebrum cerebellum. Distraction. Hey, Bishop, I need to have a meeting with you. All right, what's up? What's happening? Well, you know... You know, I, you, you always talk about your senior members and how much you love them and how much they love you. But I, I you, you know, I, I have a soul too, and 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 they don't, you know, they don't speak to me. Shut up. <laughs> how many times you spoke to them? You reap what you sow. Shut up. We know Brother Clyde, br 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 Brother Clyde, don't you? Never spoke to Brother Clyde. You reap what you sow. Shut up. That's what I'm start doing in the seed. Shut up. When you come to me with some old cognitive distractional stuff, well, Mother Loper didn't speak. I, I know Mother Loper didn't speak. Mother Loper just trying to figure out did I cut the oven off this morning or not. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I, sometimes there. Why is it okay for your trifling tale to have stuff on your mind, but can't other folk have stuff on their mind? Now, we had to put up with your tail for six months when you was going through. Coming to church mad, we dealt with it. Coming to church mean, we put up with it. Coming to church all attitudinal, we put up with it. Held church up for 45 minutes, we put up with it. And now, and all of a sudden, you done refocused, got your attention back together. Now you want to be the entire private eye on everybody else who done lost their. Shut up! Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying. Leave folk alone. You don't know what people are going through. You don't know. Think you know. You would never know. Never mind. So nothing changes. Listen to any voice other than Jesus takes you away from his safety and your own success. Whew. 
Y'all want hooping, follow me to Laurel. I'll hoop, I'll, I'll hoop in Laurel, I promise. But listening, I'm going to get in trouble. Listening, I'm going to get in trouble. Listening to any voice other than Jesus takes you away from his safety and your own success. Are y'all with me? Did not say listening to a voice other than Jesus is bad. Because sometimes we get caught up in listening to other folk and they're giving good advice. It's just good for them. But when you take an advice that's contrary to what God has for you, I'm, I'm all for people trying to help people. God knows I'm all for it. I'm all for the brotherhood, the sisterhood, the family, the body of the ecclesia, the called out, the body of baptized. I'm all for that. But you have to be careful when taking the advice of someone else against what God has said for you. Peter had to go through a gauntlet of things so that God could use him in Acts. Are y'all with me? You better be careful taking advice of somebody. You taking advice of someone that their situation looks like yours. You taking advice of someone that your situation seems like yours. But their situation ain't nothing like yours. Looks can be deceiving. Just because a sneaker got three stripes don't make it an Adidas. I don't know where that came from. That just came. <laughs> I don't know where they got it. <laughs> Be careful that good advice does not trump God advice. See, Bishop Cannon and Lady Cannon going to tell you what God wants you to hear, not what your friends want you to hear. Girl, if I was you, I wouldn't put up with that. I didn't put up with it. I know. That's why you ain't got nothing now. You better be careful. It could be good. You didn't put up with it, but now you, you, you ain't got nothing to put up with. Uh, Y'all yeah, quiet today, but I got to just give it to you like God gave it to me. Advice. Don't leave here saying, Bishop Cannon told me stop listening to bad advice. No, I told you stop listening to any advice that ain't of God. Don't you let nobody that's a workaholic tell you, girl, if I was you, <clears throat> you can miss church three, three, three Sundays out of the month. You better go get you some extra hours on your job. They don't subscribe to the same God you do. They can be a workaholic. God wants you to know he's Jehovah Jireh. He is your provider. That's good advice for them. Work with two, three, four jobs. That's good advice for them. But for what God is trying to do for you in your life, he needs you to cast all of your cares on him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Are y'all with me? Okay, so I got to hurry up. I got to hurry up. So we gave, you, we gave you visual distractions. We gave you cognitive distractions. That's the mind. You can be distracted with what you see. You can be distracted with what you think. Then my third one is you will have manual distractions. Manual distractions take your physical being away from task or efforts at hand. 
I have a problem, I'm sorry. Y'all can get offended. You can go text wherever you want to text. At this stage in my life, hadn't beat death last year, I could really care about emotions. I really could. And maybe some of you need to get sick to see death, for you to not care about stuff. I love everybody, and I, will, I, still, will, I still will bend over backwards for anybody. But when me bending is hurting God, I got to stop. I'm sorry, but we have put up with too much in the church. It's too much going on. It's too many distractions. Years ago, there, on Sunday, there was no option. We were in church. Like it or lump it, we were there. And for you at home, whether you hear physically or whether you hear on your couch, in your car, in the break room, you're still here. I'm talking about you. You saints that know better. You saints that God have brought us through some stuff. And now, because you done got caught up in something, you want to start taking sabbatical. That ain't God. No, your lifestyle got your back up against the wall. So now you want to hide because pride don't want you to see nobody. No, baby, that's your flesh. And if we get back to why church is supposed to be church, God can get the glory. You don't come to church looking at people anyway. Why are you mad because somebody ain't speak to you? As long as God spoke to you, that's all that matters. Okay, we got some new folk in here. Let me teach this. When you come to church, your, and this is for y'all at home too, your relationship with God is vertical. Your relationship with God should never be horizontal. That's why, I, hey, I don't say nothing, but I have a problem sometime with these, these groups that happen in the church. Because sooner or later, somebody's, going, somebody's faith is going to get tested, and it's going to test the fabric of that group. Yes. 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 I've been pastoring in August. It'll be 16 years. And every year me pastoring, I done seen it. Yes. How you best friends with this one today, and now tomorrow, you best friends with that one. When you was best friends with this one, you talked about that one to this best friend. Now, because they told you to get yourself together, you no longer best. Y'all ain't going to help me preach. You no longer best friends with them. So now you gravitate over here. Choose you. You got to make up in your mind. There's something wrong in your mind. Why are you that needy to have a best friend? And why you got 17 best friends? I don't know where I come from. You got one best friend. And high in the ham and cheese, can you get a best friend? And y'all ain't never been tested before. Just because you go shopping, just because you eat food together, does not make you best friend. A real best friend means she cussed me out and I cussed her out. We went to blows, but guess what? When the sun came up in the morning. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you here, I'm swinging for the fences. I don't want no friend at this stage of my life that we get together to talk about other folks. If that's all we're doing is going to the restaurant to talk about the church, I, nah, I don't need that. Tell me how I can make another million dollars. Tell me how I can start another. You know why I don't like to hang around church folk now? Because all y'all do is tell people business. You get you connect the folk for a good three to six months to let them get distracted by your fork tongue just to get all the information in their life only to leave to go tell somebody else. The streets don't talk like that. No, the streets don't talk like that. Heathens don't talk like that. Last night, yesterday, I barbecued for Lexi and I barbecued for my mentor, the, the, the man that owns ShopRite. Not the manager. The owner walked up to me and said, hey, what's that rig you got over there? I said, go look at it. I'm retired. Shoot, go on over look at it. Got to talking to the man. I had something that piqued his interest. He said, I need you got a car. I said, I ain't got no car. I don't, I don't believe in cars. He said, well, I need to get your information. I said, well, get it. Some people here know me. <laughs> he got my wife information. Now I'm done barbecuing. I'm downstairs in the theater room. I said in the theater room. He just got theater room. Church folk might got a, a, a deck. 
Mm-hmm. Yo, but stop hanging around folk ain't going nowhere. I'm talking about manual distractions. This, my wife came down about an hour earlier and said, hey, the guy uh, got your information. I said, yeah, I, I told him to find me. Um, so I'm asleep in the theater room. What was that movie we was looking at? It's the Latino uh, 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 Junta Contra. What's it called? Incontinent. Pronto. Encanto. Encanto. Y'all seen it? Oh, Gab, is it? Come here, Gab. Your tides. <laughs> so, so check this out. I'm in the movie theater. I'm in the movie theater uh, trying to go to sleep, and it's about 27 kids in there, Mother Loafer. And I'm looking at this movie trying to go to sleep because I, I didn't understand it because they was playing boots and music out of the out of the But the kids, right? The kids is the kid, the, the little baby. They telling me about the movie, yeah. right? So now. Because they're telling me about the movie, they're excited. They don't care that I just was barbecuing all morning. They don't care I smell like smoke. They don't care I'm tired. They got excited because I gave them attention. Yes. Yes. So now they're telling me about the movie. Yes. And the more they talk about the movie, the more I'm interested. Yes. Maybe if y'all talk more about Jesus, people on your job will get interested. Maybe if you talk more about Jesus than talking about the church folk, people will get interested. But anyway, anyway, they, they, I'm hyped. Like these kids is hyped. They telling me about this movie. And now I'm getting all kind of prophetic stuff because everybody in the movie, Mother, Mother Loper, everybody in the movie got a gift. But this one girl, I'm like, oh, Holy Ghost, we going to work this thing one day. Everybody got a gift. Got this girl lifting up donkeys, putting them on her shoulder. Got this one girl with pretty long hair. She going, flowers come out of place. I said, this is prophetic. I'm going to preach it one day, not two days. But the girl with no gift had the gift. I was like, wow. You know, I'm preach the last shall be first. But I dozed off, Sister Mary. I dozed off. The, the, the man was upstairs. He came from upstairs, downstairs, through all that booty. He said, <laughs> It's the same beat, just different word. I told my wife, I said, This all sound the same. You, you, mumble, 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 cuss word. Mumble, 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 cuss word. Mumble, 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 mumble cuss word. He came through all that booty shaking. Yeah. All these breasts out. Yeah. Came in through the, bar, through the bar area, past the stripper pole. Uh-huh. See, my friends got stripper poles in the basement. <laughs> to the theater room yes, to tap me on my shoulder. Yeah. Just to say, I got your information. Hey. Got something coming in October. You're going to hear from me, but the food was delicious. Now, to some of y'all, that might mean nothing. But the moral of that story was, when you keep doing what God has assigned to you, you will notice the people that will take you to the next level may not be hand clapping, tongue talking, foot stomping, children of God. They will be people that we have oftentimes preached about. But they will have the key to helping you to do something you have never done before. I like sinners. I'm around folk that suck on the hookah hose. Did I say it right? Hookah. 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 Pass me the hookah. Hook, hook, hookah. My friends eat edibles. And I'm still saved. My friends drink. And I'm still saved. They respect my wife and I. 
Like, I'm not making this up. You got to let your light shine. Light shines the brightest in dark places. You mean tell me you that saved and you can't be around somebody to smoke a hookah? You ain't got to put the hookah in your mouth. Well, I had a bishop one time, Bishop J.O. Patterson, used to say, I don't mind the saints coming to church smelling like smoke. It just ain't got to be on your breath. See, if you come to church smelling like smoke, it would suggest that you was witnessing to someone. It would suggest that you was out around people that smoked to tell them about the love of Christ. But then when you talk, and I can smell Newport. You got to be able to look, but don't touch. When I'm at my friend's mansions and stuff, and they get ready to go smoke a, smoke a blunt, they go outside. I don't get up and walk outside with them. Some of y'all walk up, where we going? <laughs> what we doing? And you can't properly show the love of God. Because let me help some of you, and I, I'm going to give you my last point, and I promise we're done. For some of you in here, watch this. Some of you, right where you are, you are the only light for some people that don't know God. And let me help you with something. Lady Candy, nobody else can help me preach, but I need you to help me preach with this one. The worst thing you can do to a person that's looking at you as light is to go back to bed. Thank you, Gabby. Come here. I said, the worst thing you can do to a person that's in darkness and they're looking at you is like, Gavin said, go back to bed. Yes. Go back to bed means go back to a place of comfort. Worst thing in the world you can do. Worst thing in the world you can do is be around people that are sucking on a hookah hose and you say, pass me the hookah. The worst thing you can do to people that's, that's drinking Hennessy shots is say, oh, give me one, dude. Now, if you drink wine, you drink wine. But you drink wine in, your, in the privacy of your own home. You don't, you don't drink wine around people that's looking for you for light and they in darkness. You don't be common with it. They have to be common with you. Manual distractions take your physical being away from your task. I said in the beginning, the older saints, you say, take the Lord God with you, baby. Everywhere you go, we don't need you shining light in the temple. It's already bright in here. Somebody said, what that mean? I'm so glad you asked. Don't be, don't be following somebody to the bathroom talking about the Lord said. No, the Lord said it in here in the temple. He didn't say it in the bathroom. The only thing the Lord's saying in the bathroom is release. The only thing the Lord's saying in the bathroom is let it go, let it go. The Lord, in the bathroom, the Lord saying, ain't no stopping us now. We're on the move. That was the Lord saying in the bathroom. Want to follow folk to the parking lot. All the people's inboxes. Come out! Folk inbox. You don't speak to me at church, but you want to be in my inbox. Tell me what the Lord said. I'm sorry. So, so verse 30. I'm still in the book. I'm done. I'm done. Verse 30 reflects Peter's transition from walking on the water to now sinking. He transitioned from doing what he asked Jesus to let him do to being caught up in distractions to the effect of being distracted. The Bible says now beginning to sink. Now aren't you glad that Peter had enough God in him that he could acknowledge water around his ankles, water around his knees, water at his waist. The text says, beginning to sink, he did what? Cried out, Lord, save me. Peter sees the same wave Jesus sees. Peter hears the same wind Jesus hears. Peter sees the same wind that Jesus sees. He and his disciples were given Jesus power four chapters earlier in Matthew 10. Yet, 
he stopped going to Jesus. And he started to sink. Peter here in this text lets the wrestling in his mind hinder the work of his hands. Peter at this moment now allow the, the tension in his mind to supersede not what God is going to do, but what he has already done. I could see, I could see you getting weary for what he has yet to do. But why, my brothers and sisters, are you weary for what he's already done? He's already done what you asked him to do. You may look back and see hurts and habits and hang-ups. You may look down and see discouragement, discontent, and doubt. You may look around and see distractions, disappointments, and distress. But if you look to the hill. He'll give you help. If you look to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, we'll be able to endure the cross and be seated with Christ. I'm done. But what we cannot afford, you ain't Peter. What happens when you don't realize you sink it. I don't know if you remember a few years back when Karen Clark and her family had a reality show. And in the last episode, <laughs> Jay Drew rose up on his father. Trump, oh, you remember that? You remember what he said before because they cut the cameras? His son was trying to tell him and his son, I, th I think at the time, Drew was late 20s, early 30s, something like that. You, you, old folk would say, you can't even pee straight, boy. You still, you just breath and bridges. You still wet behind the ears. But he was trying to tell his father what was right and what wasn't. Drew said, boy, you don't know what you think you know. Cut them cameras off. She only been back on since then. Sometimes we come to church, we don't know what we think we know. We only know him in high praise. We know him when Hezekiah, down, 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 down. You, you know him when the drums and the organ is loud. But do you know him on a Tuesday afternoon? when the instruments have been turned off. See, distractions, you know, we had a little sound difficulty. Deke had a little pin in the floor. Those are not really distractions. Because we, we, there's enough of us, one can chase a thousand. Two can put 10,000. We know how to trump little small things. Short went back there and started tinkering. Jeremiah went back there and started tinkering. But what happens when there's no body to tinker the tink? What, 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 the, the enemy comes when you're by yourself. Whether it's what you see, what's in your mind, or what's in your hand. Be mindful of things that will come to hinder what God is doing in you. Some of y'all dropping too many balls. It will suggest you're distracted. You, you're not coming to church when, when, when the norm is you never miss Sunday. You distracted. Let me, let me help some of y'all. Let me give y'all some free game. That's what they say in the circles we run in. They give you free game to get you interested to charge you for doing. Let me, let me help you. Let me help you. When you when you when you normally talk to me and say, Bishop, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. That's your norm. 
But when you come to me and say, Bishop, A, and go about your business, something going on. Let me, I'm trying to help you with me real quick. You can ask my wife. You can ask Sister Mary. You can ask Shawnee. You can ask, ask G. You can ask uh, uh, Teddy Hawkins. They'll tell you. I, I, whether it's the street in me, the military in me, or the God in me, I pay attention to detail. I do. I don't miss nothing. I might not say it, but I see it. I know how every one of you handle Bishop Cameron. Mm -hmm. And the day that you handle me like you normally don't is how I know you distracted. Distraction will keep you from Christ. We have to, as we move forward in God, I actually preached today and didn't hoot. I'm proud of myself. Where we're moving forward in God, and, I'm, I, and, and I need us to hear this. I hope those of you that heard the sermons on Thursday and Friday caught what was said. God spoke through Handy and Mark. They don't even know each other, for the record. They don't know each other. That they've never met. They're not even friends on Facebook. But they said the same thing. But my concern is I can't go where God is taking me because we can't handle it here. Now, for, for months, y'all heard me and my wife say where God was taking us. What y'all going to do with the word of God that came Thursday and Friday to say Y'all go to God now. I know y'all been questioning, do he really be with millionaires? I know y'all been questioning. I know y'all get behind the scenes and talk, do he really be where he, he, I, he don't really be at them places he said he be. I know y'all be talking. Because let me help you with something. Y'all, y'all, y'all say discernment. But even before I had discernment, game recognized game. I was a game player. Am I proud of it? Depending on what they ask me. <laughs> I'm stuck. <laughs> Teddy Hawkins. Ain't that how they danced in the 60s and the 70s? Yeah. They was always stomping their feet, wasn't they? The mashed potato. Yeah. Like y'all were stepping on roaches. And right. I'm done. But there is danger in distractions. As a man of God, as a woman of God, you have to know what God is doing for you. The scripture says, I'll let nothing separate me from the love of God. God has blessed and prospered my wife and I right now. I'm at the barbecue, and this money was coming up to me yesterday. And I was like, whew, mm, yeah. But if, if God told me today, leave it all behind, I'd leave it all behind. Me and my wife share testimony all the time. There was a season where we had nothing. So walking away from this ain't no thing. Don't, don't, and then let me say, let me, let me say this openly, because the preacher said it, but don't count my money. Let me say this as a pastor, don't count my money. Don't look at temp tags thinking we balling. I want to say it. I ain't balling. I ain't balling with the walker. But I'm, by, I'm right around BAL. <laughs> I 
I still got L-I-N-G to go. But I'm, I'm, on, I'm on my way. But don't you look at temp tags. Because see, cause see, what y'all don't see, and I ain't putting people business out in the street, y'all don't see what Bishop and Lady Cannon do for people that push us into getting what we getting for ourselves. Don't you look at that? Don't you leave today and look at them temp tags on that pretty Yukon Denali XL out there? She pretty too, ain't she? My wife went through about my wife went through about thirty of them until we found the right one. That's a whole message in itself. I'm gonna preach that one day because because we had a time limit to get that truck. We had a time limit. We had like three months to find that truck. My wife went through like thirty something trucks. More than that. There was, there, there was something that she wanted, had a time limit to get it, and we, be, we started to almost settle on some stuff that wasn't all that she wanted, but we didn't do it. And we began to get nervous, but we stayed focused. And at the last hour, something spoke to her and said, go to this particular place, and it was sitting right there. How many miles that truck got on it? I ain't never had a vehicle. with under 15,000 miles. Every vehicle I had had like 115,000. <laughs> but that's a business expense. That's the, that's the business. So, 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 so don't be saying what the cannons is doing. You look at what the business of the cannons. So I, I don't want you to get distracted. Well, I mean, I am the business. It is mine. <laughs> but according to the government, no, because you have to make stuff plain to people. Because you have preachers wearing $400,000 worth of jewelry in the pulpit. And you, have, and you have the world saying now, that's why I don't rock with preachers. Because they're about material stuff. Ain't nothing about Bishop Cannon material. Y'all should know that. Nothing about me material. I, ain't got, I don't even wear my wedding band. I ain't, I ain't nothing about me material. I'll give my last to anybody. Well, I used to. I'm being honest. I used to give my last to anybody. But I know you've been talking about me in the streets. I don't give you my last. I give you something, but I don't give you my last. That's between me and God. See, y'all got proclivities. I got some too. But I had to say it today because don't group me, my wife, and this ministry with what you see in the world. We not flashy. And I have a problem with those that do. Now, you won't rent a car from us because you say we got old cars. You won't rent a limo from us because you say we got old limos and they're out of date. But then just as soon as we upgrade and update, now you say we bought, we damned if we do, we did. What do you want us to do? Don't nobody bother you when you get in a weave every other month. And I'm going to say something. I'm, I'm done preaching. I'm going to say something while I'm on my soapbox. I'm going to preach a message on these spandex and tights, too. Because I heard that twice on Thursday and Friday. And too many of y'all got excited. Y'all not get excited about something that keeps you restricted. The scripture says, whom the Son has set free is free indeed. Why is you buying something and wearing something that you got to fight to put on and fight to take off? I'm, I'm done with the same. I'm done with the older men. I'm talking to some of you young people now. You ain't gonna never get what God got for you when your package ain't what God want people to see. Say that. Say that. Somebody said, "What?" I'll say it again. You ain't gonna never get what God want for you when they can't see what the package God created you to have. Come on here. Come on. Let me. Well, I'm, I'm trying to. There are some people that like plump. My wife will tell you what turns me on is I'll be around her, I'll be counting her rolls. And she'd be like, get messed up. No, I like her turning me on. I said, I said, let me see how far I can get my finger in that roll. I'm, hot, I'm here to help somebody. You're a fraud. 
you're, 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 you're fugazi. God created you. He created you as the gift for someone. But I can't have that gift when I don't know what that gift is. a belly there's a man out here that God got for you that like bellies Johnny Kid Teddy Hawkins Teddy Hawkins can help you if 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 a man want a woman with a belly and you got spanks on and you hide your belly he gonna look past you and you're going to keep on finding these men. See, see, God gave you a belly because a man out there want a belly. Just like there's a man, I'm here to help you. Just like there's a man out there that want a belly for you, there's a man out there that don't want a belly. And long as you keep on walking around with a belly but hiding a belly, you're going to keep on attracting men that don't want bellies. And you wonder why the relationship don't work. Because the man want a belly. Hey, oh, God help me. The man don't want no belly. And you got a belly. You just hide in the belly. My brothers and my sisters, I got to tell you. Let your belly float. Hallelujah. I'm here to help you. I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you. I'm going to tell you what God loves. Mm -hmm. That's true, but how? Some men like short hair. Some men like dark skin. Some men like light skin. I don't, I don't really understand light, like, like, like men, but anyway, yeah. Anyway, but some men like what some men like. And if you hide from what that man that God has for you, like, see, the problem is, y'all don't want what God got for you. You want what you want. You distracted by Denzel and, and Boris Cujo and Maurice Chestnut and what you, Makai Pfeiffer. You distracted by what you see on TV. You better get what God got for you. Because if anybody can get the acne cleaned up off their skin, get their teeth white. Put a little lotion on, get a nice haircut and a nice shape up. They look like a movie star too. And that thing had nothing to do with distraction. Well, yes, it did. I'm here to help some of y'all. You getting with folk that ain't what God got for you, and you gotta waste time. Time, time. You don't get time back. You don't know, one thing, huh? My hot and ready. What's that, Papa John? Little Caesar. Yeah, you need time. I'm over my time, but I'm going to let you go. You need time. You want somebody that look good. You better get somebody that is good. I don't care what you look like. Sure, you turn the lights out and he'd be Denzel Washington. <laughs> My Lord, you turn the lights out, they can be whatever you want them to be. I'm sorry, I'm done. <laughs> we got to be careful of distraction. I'm not going to ask nobody to raise their hands, but if you be honest with yourself, a lot of us should be further along than we should have are now, but we let stuff distract us. And here's the good thing about being distracted. You take it from Peter. Peter, the Bible says when he realized he was distracted, he didn't keep on sinking. He said, Lord, save me. And if you read the rest of the text, all the text says at the end, he picked up, they got on the boat and starts out. Don't let a temporary thing cause you to be distracted for a long time or longer than should be. The danger in distraction. God, we thank you this morning for what our ears have heard. 
and our hearts are filled. We trust and pray for something that's been said and done that's been edifying for these, your people. God, make us who and what you called for us to be. We pray today, God, to not allow the things that life may present us to cause us to lose focus of who you are. We thank you today that we may not be where people think we should, but by faith, God, our hand is in your hand, and we trust and believe that you will lead us to where you have desired for us to go. I pray, God, for every man and every woman today, God, that may get distracted by this thing called life. As we take a page out of the book of Peter on today, let us realize, number one, that we should not focus on what we cannot see. And number two, God, that when we do realize we're distracted, we call on you to save us. So the prayer this morning, God, is not just for those that are in the church, but for those that are on the line. Help us, God, with things that may come to distract us from you. And help us get back to where we need to be in you. We are your people. We are the sheep of your pasture. Our prayer today, God, is not for car, not for houses, not for promotion. But our prayer today, God, is for right relationship with you. Lead us and guide us in the name of Jesus. There's a man today, God, there's a woman today that has a petition before you. It is no one business to know because they... It is of a personal nature. But our prayer today is that we come in agreement with that brother or that sister. That whatever their request is, if it honors you, then we ask you to do it. In the name of Jesus. However, if it dishonors you, we ask you, God, to give them clarity of thought. So that they can be redirected in what they see. Have your way in us, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. Use us in this next stage of our life for no other reason but that you get the glory out of us. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. God bless you all on today. Have a great week. We'll see you next Sunday.